Greetings Internet, it's your soul once again and taking this opportunity to give a little bit of a message here about free speech and actually not only that, going a bit deeper, actually a lot deeper than you're usually used to hearing on these subjects. Uh, if you don't know then I am someone who has been deeply committed to internal exploration and emotional and psychological processing and healing for many years. And by internal exploration, I mean ultimately exploring my inner being and how I am inside and therefore also the mechanics of what you might call the soul or spirit as well. And I'm not going to go too hugely deeply into that. I've covered that before many times, but I just wanted to take a moment to explain how some of what I've learned in that process connects very clearly into the idea of free speech in a way that not only can help people understand the value of free speech perhaps in a different way but also to help them embody that and empower themselves in a way that perhaps heals them on multiple levels so first of all when it comes to technology and the internet we have a, a situation right now where uh, just like throughout most of history certain groups of people have tried to use their position of um, power, let's say, the ability to act. That's really all power is, the ability to act. So certain people are using their the fact that they have more ability to act to limit the freedom and free speech of other people. And historically, you know, it, it tended to be more violent from what I understand of history in terms of the way this was done. There was no television cameras or video cameras all around to expose the crimes of these people so much. So they tended to be able to get away with sending in brutal uh, violence to people who disagreed with them, let's say, and most of the people would never hear of this happening. Now today, obviously, we have a situation where most people, or many people, have got decent quality cameras and the ability to upload to the rest of the world right away, so any overt violence becomes big news quite quickly, and there's only so much that can be got away with in that regard. And so what we see now is that the power struggle, let's say, has shifted more to less obvious methods of control. So it could be economic control, or it could be uh, corruption of the legal system to control people, or it could be corruption of the education system, or many other systems that people find themselves, basically find forced on them for one reason or another, because their parents became entrusted to these systems, or they themselves were, were kind of co-opted and brainwashed into accepting that these systems are the only way to live and with the rise of social media social technology we have a huge new avenue of both expression and potential control for those who seek to dominate others to try to control so it makes perfect sense that if you have social networks with billions of people on them then they're going to be highly targeted by the en entities and individuals and groups that want to control other people it's no surprise then that when we see Facebook and Google and others like that of this world, uh, they have been highly targeted, if not started by such groups. And we see that in the way that they um, interact with people, the way that their policies are set out, and the way that they will basically pay little attention to the individual's needs whilst claiming to. Um, they will quite happily intimidate, throw out messages, eject people from the network without any real due diligence or explanation behind what they're doing. I made a post on 3Speak here on the Steam network recently uh, which shows a screen capture from Facebook basically warning me that my account was going to be restricted potentially. They gave me no real explanation as to why that was, they basically just gave me a blanket set of guidelines to follow which was kind of don't spam and don't be a nuisance. It's of no use whatsoever to me is it? I can't stop what I'm doing based on that message because it doesn't inform me of what I'm doing. It really just gives me a sense that this is kind of um, surface level attempt to look like they're responsible whereas in reality they aren't. On the other hand I do have videos from a few months ago where my comments were actually being deleted in real time on Facebook as I typed them. They would I'd refresh the page and they were deleted and it, I know it wasn't by the person who owned the thread or the you know the person I was talking to because in some cases they were my friends and I asked them they said no I didn't delete those comments. So the Facebook system whether that was a bug or whatever the point is it was actually actively deleting my comments only on certain subjects so presumably operating via keywords or perhaps by human just doing that for some reason. 
this is not really free speech. Now, people will say, well, Facebook and other companies like that, private companies, you don't have the right to uh, say whatever you like on their network because it's their network. And technically, that is true as far as I'm aware in terms of the rules that society claims to run by. Um, just like you can't go into someone's house and say whatever you want and you know they have no right to reject you. They do have a right to reject you because it's their house. So Facebook is the people who own Facebook's property and they can eject whoever they like, pretty much. The problem with that is that <clears throat> we do allegedly have free speech and if there were a um, level playing field when it comes to social networks, for example, if uh, every single social network that exists online were able to compete openly with Facebook, uh, then there wouldn't be such a problem. But the difficulty here is that Facebook and Google have a monopoly on internet traffic. As I understand it, roughly speaking, they carry about two thirds of the entire internet's traffic. And they do, they do, you know, if they eject you from their network or sometimes they ban certain industries from advertising, that has a massive effect. And apparently, from what I can tell, you know, the class action lawsuit against Facebook and Google uh, for the cryptocurrency advertising ban does make a fairly good case for showing how billions of dollars were wiped off of the cryptocurrency industry's value just moments or 48 hours maybe after Facebook uh, and other sites announced a cryptocurrency advertising ban. Obviously, if you run a, a technology uh, product and you need to advertise to people on the internet and you can't advertise on 66% of the traffic, then you're not in a very good situation. And so it's understandable that people would withdraw their support for those projects until this issue was resolved. Now, I don't want to get too much into that, but obviously Facebook's now announcing something along the lines of a cryptocurrency. Surprise, surprise. Um, so to me, that just it's pretty clear that they were using their position to dominate. They're, just try, they're, like mili they're running basically a military operation. They're trying to dominate everything everywhere as much as they can, extract as much wealth and control and data from everything which is the hallmark of um, CIA and groups like that. So, first of all, it's important that we have something that's alternative to Facebook uh, and so on, which we have in the form of Steam and um, other sites that run on the Steam network. My site, Eureka.org, now runs on Steam. Partially, it's a hybrid between a private database and Steam. People can elect to use either one. Uh, Threespeak.online, which is where I've uploaded this video, is a great site which is specifically for deplatformed or censored people from other social networks and to DTube and many other sites running off the Steam blockchain. Now, this is the technological background to where we're at. Most people probably watching this will have some understanding of all of this. Now, obviously, it's important that we have free speech, but it's maybe not obvious to everyone. Many people who don't veer beyond the limited thinking belief systems and narrative that they've been shown through the education systems and government um, and media avenues, often they don't really say very much that means that they uh, encounter a problem with having free speech. They think, well, you know, I trust the government to uh, protect me, and if there's someone complaining that their free speech is being impinged, then it's probably because they're saying something I wouldn't like, so that's okay. I, you know, there are a fair few people who think like that. Hopefully, not as it's not the majority, but who knows, maybe it is. Um, the thing is that once your life becomes um, abused, once you are abused and overrun and overpowered by uh, the imbalance we have in society, the sort of uh, pyramid system of power, then you will probably find that you want to say something and that you want people to listen to you. And you'll suddenly find that it's quite difficult because the system actually is set up to shut you down if you start saying things that are too damaging to the system. Uh, by the system, I refer to basically the system of control uh, that's named judiciary, uh, police, military, um, some of the mass media channels, some of the bigger social networks, and so on. These, these kind of, it's kind of a conglomerate of um, entities and power brokers who sit atop a pyramid who basically define the rules of the system to try to shape the world as they want it to be shaped. That's basically what I'm talking about. Um, so although people may value free speech, they may say they support free speech, they don't necessarily know how much free speech is being shut down every day, constantly, all around them. And in some cases, they will actually stand up and cheer for that suppression of free speech because they think it serves them. But it never does. Because th this, is, this is the analogy I want to make, or the metaphor, between the human body and society. So I don't see it as random that a human body is made up of a huge number of cells individual cells, each having their own somewhat autonomous 
uh, reality. They have these processes going on, inputs and outputs. They do their thing. And really, a, a human society is very much a similar thing. Just like in a human body, some elements of a society can go rogue, let's say, or turn against the rest of the system. Just like an autoimmune disease in the human body where the body attacks itself or attacks potentially a cancer, for example, where the body's out of balance and the cells aren't functioning as intended. We have a similar thing in society and we try to use prisons and all kinds of other methods to deal with these issues. Um, but that none of those things really deal with the root cause, first of all. If we were dealing with the root causes, then we wouldn't need prisons, probably. We wouldn't have these problems. People just say, oh, well, humans have always been like that, always going to be like that. Well, no, behaviour patterns have causes, and when you understand them with compassion, you can actually transform them. So, however, in order to do that, you have to have some level of communication going between all the humans, or in the human body, between all the cells. So a large part of the healing process that I've been engaged in is about specifically the process of identifying where the mental processes in the mind and the belief system and thoughts are shutting down the emotions and stopping them signal and stopping them have the message put across the messages they're trying to put across because as soon as your mind decides that it's okay not to feel certain feelings your emotional body gets shut down and now you're no longer empathic now you've lost a large amount of the input you need to be alive from your surroundings from yourself from your own inner voices from your own inner intentions and desires, they're now shut down and they're now only allo allowed to provide a certain narrative or discourse or angle on things that your mind has decided is acceptable. And that's pretty much what Western society is based on. It's based on, if you look into it, if you feel into this deeply, you'll realise just how much people are being emotionally shut down. For example, sports games. Many, why, why are so many people willing to spend so much time and money into going and watching football, baseball, basketball and so on um, you know, yeah, there is an element of watching athleticism and they like a competition and maybe gambling and things like that, but a large part of it is because we're so shut down emotionally that that's one of the few places people can go and shout and scream and it's socially acceptable. If you were to do, if people were to shout and scream like that on a non-football day, let's say, in Britain, people would accuse them of being crazy or have them arrested for being dangerous or something like that, but because it's football, oh, it's all right, it's just a game. So there's this massive control grid in place that's in our own minds that actually projects out that most of our emotions are bad and negative and shouldn't be allowed and that's hugely hugely disruptive and dysfunctional and it's actually causing most of our health problems from my experience at the root level so without going massively into that which is a huge subject i just want to highlight that when your own internal world senses itself when your mind senses your feelings it's quite similar to when certain elements in society censor other people and, the, and while it might seem from certain perspectives that that's a good thing and that you need to do that because some of these messages are disrupting or causing a problem or whatever, dissenting away from the lovely positive view you have of everything, the reality is those voices don't exist unless there's a problem. There's a problem somewhere. That's why you're hearing those voices. That's why you're feeling those feelings. And problems don't get solved by pretending they don't exist. You know, like building a wall around a country or... Um, any of the other ridiculous, even militaristic policies that certain governments put in place to try and solve problems with their neighbours won't solve the problems. It just increases tensions, it just increases discomfort on both sides of the divide. So it's a short-term fix. Basically, politicians, you know, they know they're only in term for a few years. They know that they basically need to deliver quickly on something. So they never put in place long-term solutions that will actually work. They only ever put in short-term solutions which look good on paper, or appeal to people in the short term, but really don't actually work. Unfortunately, in the long term, that means things really do fall apart and suffering increases, ultimately. So, just like how it's important for you to listen to your own emotions unconditionally and in your heart and allow them to express safely as well, um, ideally non-verbally, just so you know, that's my experience, is do it through sounds and movement, perhaps, with your body. It's also essential for every voice in society to be heard. And you might not like what they say, but if you don't hear what they say, then you won't really know where they're coming from, why they are as they are, or perhaps even how you're causing them to be in a way that you cause negative, call negative. You may say, see a whole nation or group of people who you see as really angry and causing you, you know, and your family difficulties in some way. But if you don't hear what they're saying and feel and understand where they're coming from, 
you may be completely oblivious to the way that you yourself and your family and your choices are actually causing the situation that's causing them to feel terrible, that's causing them to be angry, that you're now upset about. And that's really what this is, a lot of this is about, taking responsibility for the way your actions influence the rest of the planet and how many of the problems you see in other countries may be directly related to how you live your life, although you hadn't realised. Now, some people, when they realise that, don't care, and they basically, you know, they've lost their heart, and they don't see the benefit of balance and integrity, and they basically just want to carry on living purely for themselves and, you know, screw everyone else. Uh, the problem with that is it will bite you on the arse eventually, or it's going to bite, you know, other people in your country on the arse uh, in some way, shape, or form. And some people don't care about that, but... I would suggest if you want to survive, it's a good idea to care about these things because no man is an island, as the famous phrase goes. Everyone is interconnected and ultimately we need to be looking out for each other to some extent. It doesn't mean to say other people are dependent on you or you're dependent on other people. It just means that you think carefully and feel carefully about your actions so that you get the best possible result overall in balance for everyone, including yourself. So if you have social networks that are shutting people down, it's really... You know, you have to ask who is that benefiting, and really, it can only be benefiting the type of people who don't care about balance for other people, which would be pretty much the average stereotypical image of a company CEO or politician. That's how they're generally painted, because that's how they generally are. That's how the psychology is, and there are numerous people and books have been written on connecting psychopath psychopathic tendencies to um, what they call functional psychopaths, basically psychopaths who who really have very limited emotional understanding and limited empathy, who rise to power positions within corporations and government because of that, partially, because they're able to make decisions which benefit things on a numerical number, numbing, numb level, but not on a human, real, engaging level of in terms of actually what's going on. So things look good on paper and on a balance sheet as a result of what they do, but ter they feel terrible, and ultimately they probably will destroy the company at some point because... At the end of the day, unless a company is acting as a complete tyrant, which some of them are, um, it is their success is largely dependent on them being able to uh, have support from people willing to pay the money. So either they monopolise and completely terrorise and overpower everyone, or they, they die if they're psychopathic. They have to then evolve to be empathic and work in a good way. Unfortunately, what we're seeing right now is a lot of these companies have grown to be very big, and they are tyrannical. But they, they, they've learnt through public relations and psychological analysis to smooth over their appearance with the world so that they appear to be uh, more acceptable. Basically, they lie uh, so that people will continue using their services. And we're at a point where, basically, a lot of people still haven't really grasped that. They, have, they don't want to look beyond the rose-tinted glasses. And so they just keep on using these systems and services and not really paying attention to the effect it's having. Um... I just want, I mean, the, the thing is, you can either view this, you can research this through researching the technology involved and the actual effect it's having on people, but if you don't actually also end the denial of your own emotions so that you get your real empathy and intuition coming in, then you're not really going to even understand what you're looking at. You're just going to, you know, oh, well, that looks like a problem, but you won't really feel it. You won't, in your heart, recognise what it's like to be on the receiving end of brutality in the form of um, censorship or actual physical violence, uh, economic abuse or whatever you want to call it uh, and in fact many people who are so shut down empathically and intuitively and in their heart will often blame the people who are actually victims of the situation in some way um, in terms of social networking you know one of the main things that people might say is well it's a marketplace for software build your own social network and you know then you won't have this problem with Facebook and so on so I actually did that and uh, obviously uh, so did the people, many people working on the Steam network, on the Steam blockchain. And often people use these networks and they love them and they try and get their friends to come across and they can't because they find their network's totally entrenched on Facebook or a similar site. And there are reasons for that. Obviously having massive budgets, as these companies do, they're able to put huge amounts of resources into making great software that's you know, easy to use and people like. That's understandable. But... The other problem is they design them to be addictive deliberately to ma manipulate the brain chemistry of the people using them and literally to act something like a drug dealer, like selling an addictive drug. And several people at the, on the board of Facebook have resigned for, over this and they don't allow their children to use Facebook. They've made public statements about how the company is you know, lacking in integrity and deliberately trying to uh, manipulate people. Now, I find it ironic, in fact, that um, I got this post from Facebook warning me that I'm misleading people somehow in an unspecified way when 
you know, their own C well, I don't know about CEO, I can't remember exactly who it was, but their own board level people are saying the same thing about Facebook. So it's just denial, ultimately, isn't it? Doing one thing and saying another. So again, that's why I really like the Steam Network. I currently value it more than I value even EOS and the voice system that Dan Larimer is launching to try to replace Steam. Basically because I see that Steam has a greater potential for supporting free speech. It, it really is very challenging to censor it. Um, I'm not aware of any real hardcore full-on censoring that's taken place on there at all. There might be one or two cases I think a few years ago when people uploaded illegal pornography or something like that and the witnesses agreed to remove that from the network. Um, but that doesn't happen very often and certainly I've never really heard of anybody full-on being censored just for political messages or saying something that people disagree with. It is possible to be downvoted on Steam and for your post to be hidden in some, um, not completely deleted, but just it, the previews don't show up basically, you have to click on them to view them. Uh, but that's not on all sites that run the Steam Network, it's only on some. And even then it's not fully censored, you can still view it. So it's just a much better system and if we're going to solve society's problems and actually improve life and leave something great for our grandchildren, so to speak, and create something great for ourselves, then we need to have that free communication. We need to be free to be annoyed by other people. We need to be free to say what we feel and think so that other people can hear us. Otherwise, we're basically in an authoritarian nightmare um, with you know pretty logos and great theme music, which is you know is pretty much what a lot of the corporations have delivered to us so far. Um, so yeah, I would really be appreciative if you'd let me know what you think and feel about this and what you're personally doing to. Uh, support free speech and your, you know, perhaps your experiences with being shut down. Um, I mentioned before that I've been shut down on Facebook and YouTube without them telling me. That's the worst part. It's actually tell you you've been shut down. You can do something about it, but they don't. They prevent your message from reaching anyone without telling you. So, you know, that in itself is nefarious, and uh, that's not something that is representative of a free market. It's not something that's representative of a free marketplace of ideas where Facebook just wins because it's the best. That's representative of a system that's deliberately trying to mislead people um, to keep them and monetize them and steal their data, basically, which is what they're doing. So, yeah, please do support Steam and 3Speak uh, Online and my site, eureka.org, U-R-E-K-A.org, and any Steam site and any other network anywhere that, that supports, truly does support free speech, um, because without it, society is going to be uh, you know, very much hindered and I don't really like the idea of where society is going to go without free speech. Uh, it can only end in, in tears and, and a lot of suffering. So let's do what we can to avoid that and uh, create a brighter future for all. The one that feels good and that's loving and where no one's intimidated to say what they think. I think that would be uh, uh, you know, the best we can do. So as always, much love to all and I look forward to reading your comments and uh, wish you all well. Peace.